for Fantasy Football Semi-Pros. Give myself a counter to concussion. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to the Fantasy Football Semi Pros Podcast. Once again, I'm Brandon, and with me is my co host Ryan. That's me. Yeah, Ryan, how are you today? It looks like it might be looking at me a little bit. I am pretty good. Pretty good. How about yourself? Eh, definitely been better, but can't complain. I'm here talking football with you. Yeah, that's fun. I guess. Why'd you change my thing? Hmm? Why is he? I didn't change it. It's not correct. Oh. <laughs> oh well. I might overcorrect it on our camera. We'll check that in a minute. Yep. Weird. And you gotta tilt it this way. This way. No, no, no. yeah. Yeah. Ja. It's gonna take a minute, let it go. <clears throat> Dang 30 second lag. All right, we're good. Let's just go. Let's just, just, just shoot it. Well, so referencing what Ryan was talking about already, why he changed my thing, um, we're going to start off with this with just a little, something a little fun. Who is the best fantasy team that you can put together of players you have seen play live? Okay, so it doesn't matter when they played, correct? doesn't matter when they played. Okay, I'm going to say <laughs> the best quarterback I've seen play live overall just as an overall player that I've seen play in person, Aaron Rodgers. Am I going through the whole list? Yeah, let's go ahead and get through your list. All right, and then I'd say running backs. There's going to be a lot of Bengals here. All right. <laughs> um, Joe Mixon and Corey Dillon as my two running backs. Um, surprisingly, Jordy Nelson makes the cut here. I did see a <laughs> Packers game in Chicago a couple years back, uh, December 2018. That's pretty cool. So, Aaron Rodgers actually won that game by throwing a deep bomb to Jordy Nelson. So I, I'd have to say those two make the cut. Um, obviously, Ocho Cinco. <laughs> He's got to make one of the wide receiver spots, right? And then I, I'm going for my flex here as TJ Hushman Zada. Who's your mama? Who's your dia? TJ Who's your mama? Who cares? <laughs> yeah, TJ. So a lot of Bengals there. I know I've probably I've seen the Raiders play, but that was – the year before they got Jacobs, um, we've seen Philip Rivers in action with San Diego. Yeah, we've seen Philip Rivers. Uh, we saw the Chiefs back before Mahomes. Before Mahomes. Which you're missing a tight end on here. Who's your tight end? I don't know. I I don't know. Jermaine Gresham, maybe? Fair. Or I think Jimmy Graham was with the... Bears when I saw him in Chicago, so I'd have to go. To he he might. I don't think he was last year. Was his first year with the Bears. I can't remember then. I don't know who <clears> it would be. <throat> Tony well, Gonzalez. <laughs> if we saw the Chiefs back there. <laughs> QB wise, mine's between Drew Brees and Peyton Manning. Fair I actually enough. saw Peyton Manning on both the Broncos and the Colts. Interesting. Um, I'd probably go with Drew Brees on that one though. Yeah. Fantasy or, wise. Fantasy wise, yes. Well, personal. Personally, I'd rather see Drew Brees. Same. Um, running back wise, let's see. I can't. Remember. I should have wrote this stuff down. I didn't. Oh yeah, Le'Veon Bell. I've seen this Bengals play the Steelers multiple times. And the other one I think I had was Adrian Peterson when the Bengals played against the Vikings. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's a good one. Wide receivers. Um, I think I had to go Antonio Brown, Michael Thomas. Yeah. My flex, I think I went with A.J. Green. I think he's had a better career than Ocho, but... Yeah, but I, I would still rather have Ocho <clears throat> than A.J. <laughs> Ocho is definitely a more fun personality to watch. Oh, yeah. I like A.J. Green, though. I lo- I enjoy those people who are very... So uh, you don't have a tight end spot on there. Who's I noticed there? that. Yeah, I missed. So, my, who's your tight end? My tight end is Tony Gun- Tony Gonzalez. Well, okay, so then we got the same guy. <laughs> All right. All right. So Give next, me the blind resume. I actually got two of them here for you. Okay. I'm this first looking. one, it's, good. it's four players. Oh, this is going to be tough. Most TD receptions per game since 2018. Devontae Adams. 
Devontae Adams is one of those at .88. The other player B is at .79 touchdowns per game, touchdown receptions per game. Okay. Player C is .71, and player D is .64. Um, so Devontae Adams, I'm going to have to say is the .88. <clears throat> Yeah, by far. I mean, I think he had like what sixteen touchdowns and I think he has thirty eight in his last thirty six. Yeah, something ridiculous. But that's that's over one. Thirty. Well, this touchdowns. is since twenty eighteen. That was in. Oh, okay. <clears throat> um, Mike Evans is he in the in the top four? Yep, he's the last one at point six four. Um. Ooh, this is tough. A lot of good wide receivers out there. Okay, what about DeAndre Hopkins? Nope. No. Don't don't tell me it's like something like stupid like Cooper Cup. No. Uh, wow. One's in the AFC. One's going to be in the NFC. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> still thirty-two <laughs> teams to choose from. Uh, the point seven nine. Um, AFC West. Tyler Lockett? Or did I already say him? He's in the NFC. No. AFC West. Who's in the AFC West? Cardinals, that's the NFC, right? Who the heck's in the AFC West? (laughs) I'm running through the heads now. Raiders, Broncos, Chargers, Chargers and Chiefs. Chiefs. Tyreek Hill? Mm Mm-hmm. And the third one, point seven one, he plays in the NFC North. <clears throat> He's probably the number two on his team now. Thielen. Yep. Adam Thielen. Yep. Yeah, that makes sense. Both, all th- four of those guys are at a point six or above per game. That's pretty good odds. Though. You want those guys? <clears throat> <clears throat> While touchdowns are fluky to <clears throat> predict, those guys seem to be pretty consistent in that field. That's a tough one. Yep. So the other one, this is three wide receivers. What are you doing on your phone? I've got the picture right here. Oh. I didn't put it in here. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> uh, this is three wide receivers. I'll give you the last one. I'll tell you who that one is. It's okay. Robert Woods. Of course. Uh, he's had 5.8 receptions per game, 8.6 targets, 66.8 yards per game. And point three receiving touchdowns per game. So player A, they have six tar- or six receptions per game, eight point three targets per game, sixty eight point nine targets per game, and point four you mean touchdowns. Yards? Per- yeah, sorry, yards. And point four receiving touchdowns per game. Michael Thomas. Nope. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oops. Sorry, guys. Um. <clears throat> there's, there's like five wide receivers on that team. There's over I will say this: was, this there. receiver is going about the same spot as Robert Woods in drafts. Is that like fifth round or something? Something like that. Probably thereabout. Oh, man. Mike Evans. Dang it! I already picked him, didn't I? In the other one, yes. Oh yeah, that's right. Um, he's in the same division as Woods. <laughs> Not Nuke. Um, Same team. Cooper Cup? Yep. Oh, I hate that guy. <laughs> Nothing personal. Just The other one, he's had 4.4 receptions per game, 7.2 targets per game, 68.8 receiving yards per game, and .5 touchdowns per game. Hmm. Crazy thing is, he's going a lot earlier than drafts and these other two. Darius Slayton. I just throwing out names here. Darius Slayton's not <laughs> even being drafted and redrafted anymore. Um, Same division. That's the Rams, Cardinals. Damn, who else is there? Darius Slayton. Seattle. Seattle. Right. Who's the fourth team in that division? 49ers. 
it DK? Yep, it's DK Metcalf. Man. Those numbers are not far off from me. No, those are pretty close and not very impressive if you ask me. I mean, those numbers alone aren't why I'm out on DK Metcalf this year. But this just shows you, go running back early. Oh, yeah, always. Always go running back early. <clears throat> so, then we have a trivia question for you. Oh, gosh, another one? <laughs> this one's a trivia, not a blind resume. Okay, okay. There are two QBs with consecutive games of 300 pass yards and a rushing TD last season. So they've had at least two conse- or two games that were consecutive with 300 pass yards and a rushing TD last season. Who were they? Justin Herbert, Josh Allen. Nope, and nope. Wow, oh, Lamar Jackson? Nope. What? He doesn't throw for 300 yards. No, oh, you're right. Um... <coughs> This is tough. We got a nickname for one of these guys. Uh, Murray? What nickname do we have for Murray? I don't know. <laughs> AFC North. Okay, not Rogers, not Kirk Cousins. Not NFC North, AFC North. Oh. Wow. Burrow? Burrow is one, yes. No. Yep. He no, had two he consecutive six games. Six games? He had two consecutive wow. games. Wow. Actually, he got hurt week 11. Oh, dang. I thought it was earlier than that. Dang, Joey Burrow, huh? And the other one, he's a, he me. was a quarterback two last year. Taysom Hill. Nope. Jalen Hurts. Nope. Andy Dalton. No. <laughs> uh, Mitch Trubisky. Nick Foles. Derek Carr. Derek Carr starts for the Raiders. Yeah, he was a quarterback too, fantasy wise. Oh, I thought you were talking. So Burrow and Carr both had consecutive games of 300 passing yards and a rushing TD. I'm never gonna get these. <laughs> it, that yes. is a tough one. This is bull crap. <laughs> Thank I you for saving yourself. Saved myself. I did. So now Darn we're gonna get to the meat of our show. Yeah, great. We're gonna start with our fantasy football tips and tricks. <clears throat> yes. Because we are winners. <clears throat> yes, we both have recently won a league last season. And I think if we have over 15 championships between the two of us. Yeah, I have like four. Two. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> well, yeah. No, yeah, two. Oh, sweet. My package is your life. Nice. All right, All right so I'll ahead. start with the first one. My first trip tip... I kind of mentioned it for the draft. We originally did this on fifth or three tips and tricks each on the draft, but this one does apply for the full season. And we kind of changed it for that. Mm-hmm. And my first one is know your league. I'm not just talking about who or what positions you start, even though that is very important. Yeah, do you have a but, super flex, a flex? <clears throat> what are you doing? Know the scoring. Is it five points per pa- passing touchdown? Four points per passing touchdown? Is it points def- per completion? Yeah, points or per completion. Point completion, whatever it may PPR. be. PPR <clears throat> standard. What type of league is it? There's some weird. There's some unique leagues out there. There's mm. vampire leagues. I play in. It's called a cutthroat league. Dynasty, redraft, keeper, best ball, daily fantasy. Know your type of league. And it'll take us forever to explain all of those different types of leagues. So you can just Google. We'll reference Google. <laughs> <laughs> know who you're drafting and playing with. Know the people that you are playing with. Last year, I snaked Kareem Hunt for mine because I knew he was somebody that was, he was high on him, and I took the chance because I knew Hunt was going to be a good player. Know, have so an know, idea, like, know the members in your league <clears throat> is what Barber's saying. And, you, and it, it's hard, especially our specific redraft league has – recently had a little bit of a turnover. So yep. learning the players and their tendency, the managers and their tendency, you got to do your best to figure it out. Use the leak chats and just discuss things or the messages. Yep. Yeah, get just get to know them. Like BS in the chat, sometimes that's the best way. Talk about football. Yeah. Talk Absolutely. about life. Absolutely. Uh, another one, are there any <clears throat> special rules in your league? Like, um, if players can be dropped after the game if they're on your bench, 
Like I said, let's say I had somebody who's playing in Thursday night game on my bench. He gets hurt and stunned for the season. I can drop him and pick up somebody that could be useful for that Sunday. Or do you have to wait until the games are over on Monday after Monday night? Yep. So there's a little... Um, Is there an extra game against the median? That's actually one thing that we implemented um, in our Keeper League. because Two years ago. Okay. Um, Because it's frustrating being that guy that's up there and total points scored, but you feel like you're losing every week. I had a year like that. <clears throat> we both had it at some point. I'd be like the second or third highest scorer in the league, but I was just head to head. I was just getting eked out just by a little bit. So we decided to do a median score. So you can go as long as you score above the half point of your uh, half uh, half of your league, you get a win. Yeah, if you're in the top five scoring, you get a win. So you can go two and zero, one and one, or there is a rare case you can go zero and zero zero and two. Ties, I guess. Yeah, I guess you could tie the median and tie your opponent. That will probably never happen. Probably not. It's very rare, but if that happens, I want to see it happen just once. If that happens, I'm looking at this guy and thinking, okay, we're all going to die now. And is there a transaction limit? I'm somebody who pays attention to that waiver. I make a lot of moves. And if there's a transaction limit, I have to stop myself. Is it a fab league? Is it waivers? Yeah, I know those kind of things. Yeah. That kind of transitions in the mind if you're done. Yep. So, kind of opposite of Brandon here, I'm saying keep your wi- your waiver wire priority, would it be low or high? Low. Low. You want it to be the number one. Right. Lower so, number. So if you have the first waiver priority, obviously any player you want, you get. So keep your waiver priority low. I know, and I've seen it a lot, especially we draft a little bit early just in case. Um, maybe yeah. we need to find somebody new. Yeah, maybe. this year, as he mentioned, we had quite a bit of turnover in our keeper league, so we drafted a little bit earlier. We didn't know how people were going to draft. We like we like to do a slow draft because I think it gives just time to get this done. And yeah, not everybody has to be in the same place at the same time. Right, which can be pretty pretty tough to do with <clears throat> daily lives. So I'm saying don't make a lot of moves. We have guys in our in our redraft league that have probably made 15, 20 moves already. Uh, it's preseason, folks. It's preseason. The, the, <laughs> the guys you're watching right now, you're probably not going to see on Sundays. I mean, we saw last night uh, Jacksonville versus the Saints. Travis uh, Etienne got hurt. Etienne's done for the year. I was going to mention that earlier. But, yeah, Etienne's done. So if you – went ahead and used up a bunch of waiver wires, you might not be able to get Ogun Boogie Woogie, whatever his name, Ogun Boogle Way. What's the third? Ogun Joby. Ogun Joby. You're not going to pick him up anyways. I mean, you might as well because what if James Robinson gets hurt? Carlos Hyde. I forgot about Hyde. So, I mean, either way, go pick up Hyde. But if you've made 30 moves already, you're not going to be able to get that guy because somebody else is seeing ETN down. I'm looking at leagues where I had ETN in one of them, and he's in my starting lineup. And I'm sitting here thinking, in the flex. Well, and that league's different. That one's a dynasty league. So right, the waivers but, work a little differently there. Right, right, right. But I'm saying in a redraft league specifically, mm-hmm. keep your waiver wire priority low. Don't, especially before the regular season even starts, <clears throat> do not go pick up every name that you hear on ESPN because they had four catches in 76 yards and a touchdown. It's preseason, folks. It is preseason. This does not matter. This does not matter at all. It does matter. I'm going to say 99 because yeah, people are going to get cut this week. So you might go pick up somebody that had a really great game in week one of preseason. They might not even show up in week two. And they're cut. And they're cut. So I'm saying keep your keep your, your waiver priority low. Now, um, you mentioned I'm, I'm not for that. I actually do that. I try to keep my waiver wire low. I make a lot of moves after that, after what wa- wa- waivers run during free agency. Yeah, and he still doesn't have a kicker, so there's some <laughs> there's method behind that madness. Kickers are the best. <laughs> <laughs> so that leads me to my next one. My second tip. Wow, there's a lot of waiver priority here, huh? <laughs> <laughs> my second tip is go get that guy. Mm. Now this might only apply when you're at one of those lower waiver wire priorities. And 
that actually worked out for me last year. I waited. I picked up guys after free agency ran. I had a better waiver wire priority. So I grabbed Mike Davis after Christian McCaffrey got hurt. Yeah, if you can wait to pick up guys <laughs> without making a claim. One of my biggest competitors in that league, he actually had a rough year last year. Because be dealing between injuries and not being able to get Mike Davis. Sorry, 116. It... it <laughs> it helped tank his le- his team last year. Well, it didn't help because he also lost Michael Thomas, too. <laughs> well, that's what I said. He dealt with uh, injuries. But, uh, I mean, having a good running back can help keep you afloat and get you in the playoffs. Yeah, that was pretty close there. Yeah. And, basically, what it's saying is don't be afraid to grab that guy. Or if there's somebody you really want, grab him, especially early. Waiver wire priority is going to be more important early than late in the season because you're going to have that player for longer. Mm-hmm. And I mentioned it blocks other te- other players, other managers from being able to perform. Stop stealing my thunder. thunder. <laughs> Which one am I stealing? I don't have it on here. My rule number two. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Well, and that's something I plan on talking about with this one. Yeah, and I'm, I'll, I'll kind of piggyback off of that, but... So, Ryan's tip and trick number Sorry, two. Sorry, I'm not trying to cut you off. You're fine. I kind but of whatever I need. I'm playing off of Barber here uh, just a teeny tiny bit, but my, my second tip here is get a little bit more involved with the NFL. Uh, keep up to date with injuries around the league. Uh, and I, I'm talking about the NFL league, um, not just your, the, not just the guys on your team or your favorite teams that you like to watch on TV mm-hmm. on Sundays or Thursday nights or Monday nights or whatever it may be, but keep up to date with with injuries um, because yeah, this kind of plays off of my number one rule: keeping your waiver wire priority low. If if CMC goes down. Everybody's putting in a claim for that backup RB two. Mm-hmm. If they already don't, if he's not already handcuffed, right? Um, you got Mike Davis last year, so you were able to do that because you kept your priority low. Yep. Right. Did you really need Mike Davis? Nobody paid off for me. Right. So <clears throat> one of the notes I have in here is saying, use this rule to to figure out, you know, and keep up to date with injuries and all that other stuff and news around the league because. Production is going to go up and down. It's a roller coaster, right? Um, you got your guys with high ceilings, and they're going to be producing. But you can go get somebody that you may not specifically need, but you can hurt somebody else's run at a championship, mm-hmm. right? You got to be that guy. <laughs> you got to be your own that guy or girl, um, and you can prevent somebody from. From filling a need, this this isn't a utopian candy land. This is fantasy football. Yep. You gotta do what you gotta do to win within the rules, obviously. Now, ways that I like to keep that down, like I said, I make a lot of moves, mm-hmm. but I wait until after waiver wires run, waivers run, players go on free agency. Then you could pick them up without losing your waiver priority. Right. I usually then that's when I'll grab a kicker that I want to stream or a defense I want to stream. That's when I'll pick up players that. People just don't pay attention to a miss. And that's one of the easiest ways to kind of build your team and keep that low. So when the Mike Davises of the world or Alexander Madison's, mm-hmm. Tony Pollard's, when they get their chance, you're quite, right there to scoop them up. Quite possibly <clears throat> this year, either Tony Jones or Latavius Murray, if something would happen to my boy Camara. Yeah. Did you watch any, You watched that game last night. You heard what they said about Tony Jones, right? It's pretty dang good. They're saying Sean Payton really likes this guy, and he's trying he's, to make it into existence. Uh, he's number two. Yeah, he's he's a pretty solid back. I thought he looked pretty good, but I looked at the three leagues that I'm in, and he's taken by somebody in all of them. So, mm-hmm. so this leads me to my third third waiver her third tip is just be active. Yeah, don't just check your league once a week, twice a week. Try to be there on there daily. Number one helps you get to know your. That know the people you're playing with. Mm-hmm. Number two, it keeps you up so you can see what's going on in this league. Okay, this player was dropped for waivers. I think this guy's still productive. I'll grab him. Yeah, might as well. 
another thing, and this goes along a little bit with being active. <clears throat> if you have a player that's played on <clears throat> Thursday night, whether or not he's your running back three or wide, re- wide receiver three, move him out of your flex into the wide receiver running back spot. That way you open up another spot. In case somebody gets injured. Right. You have some flexibility to play with. With the flex position <clears throat> now open. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. The big thing you see, though, teams start losing interest if they go 0-4 or they're out of the playoffs. Number one, if you're 0-4, don't quit. I've come back and won a league from that. Yeah. It's tough work, but all you got to do is make the playoffs, and you've got your shot. And that's true. If you're knocked out of the playoffs, don't quit playing. Number one, that, that can impact somebody down the road. Like, Ryan and I could be playing for the number one seed. Ryan's playing against the guy who's quit the league, and I'm playing against the number two seed, or number three seed. Or some guy trying to get into the playoffs. Yeah. And so they're still setting always their try roster. To, yeah, always set your roster. Don't quit on the league. And if you quit week six last year, you're thinking Jonathan Thomas or Jonathan Taylor. He sucks. Yeah, I dropped him. But if you paid attention throughout the year and you played, he got he better after he turned like he left. On. And <laughs> there's a reason why he's being drafted as a running back one right now. Yeah, he turned it up. So not only does it help you win, potentially win your league for this year, it makes you a better player overall. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> All right, Ryan, you want to go with your tip number three? I'm going to go over trades, and obviously it's just like the stock market, uh, you know, buy low, sell high, and that can be really tricky. Look, we got a couple people <clears throat> in a few of our leagues that are just dirt. <laughs> <laughs> you'll get a trade, you'll you get the little notification from Sleeper or whatever app you use, and it's like, oh, you've been proposed a trade, and it doesn't really say who said, who proposed you a trade, right? Mm-hmm. You open it up, and it's like they want your next year's first round pick and for Evan Alvin, Ingram. Alvin Kamara <laughs> and, and Patrick Mahomes and they're going to give you Darius Slayton and I don't know Quadre Allison <laughs> Quandre Allison Quandre Allison yeah and you're like are you kidding me if you're going to if you're going to tr- obviously everybody wants to win the trade all right everybody wants to win a trade i've made trades where i thought I can give up this person and open up this spot and take the two guys that I got and, and probably have a little bit of a plus differential. Yeah. You know what I mean? I will say it's not always important to win that trade. Right. There's yeah. been trades I've made, especially with him, where yeah. he looked like the clear winner right off the bat. Now, you never know how it's going to play out, but I'm willing to take – Somebody, or maybe a little bit of a loss on that trade, if it still helps my team. Right. So don't be dead set on winning that trade. <clears throat> yeah, and that's the thing. Make If you're going to offer a trade, let, let, let's say I'm going to go more of a dynasty route here. It's a lot easier to trade in dynasty than redraft. Yeah, and it's hard It's hard to trade in, in redraft leagues because nobody... It's hard to these guys next yeah. Year it's like, hard to say like I want to trade this running back and this wide receiver for this running back and wide receiver. Most people don't want to do a one for one trade, right? And it's hard. I get that, <clears throat> but so I'm gonna kind of go the dynasty aspect, the dynasty route. Look, if you're in a 12 team league and you finished seventh last year, and you look at your draft, your draft position or whatever and what draft picks you have what what's the difference between seventh and, and twelfth your pick yeah just your pick right go ahead and sell your studs i mean we see it almost every year i'm not gonna go on a complete sell your studs be smart about it you try to want to try to keep those young studs well, that yeah. you could keep when you're when you are competing but like um See, Juju Smith-Schuster, if you can get a first out of him... Yeah, sell him. Kick him to the curb. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm, I'm even willing to say, I <clears throat> I kind of accidentally tanked one of my teams in a dynasty. <laughs> I, I don't think you really accidentally tanked it. It just didn't perform it up what we thought. everybody thought I was going to do. I, I took over a team, and I thought, oh, this is a pretty good team, and I finished everybody did. seventh. I didn't even make the playoffs, and it mm-hmm. was a, just an underperforming team, and I just looked at the talent there, and I said... 
don't be afraid to sell your team. I don't mean, be afraid just, to rebuild. Yeah, don't be afraid <clears throat> of rebuilds. I, I think the draft, and I think you, you're gonna say something about the draft next, but. That's fun stuff. Like you got all that stuff to look forward to. You're obviously going to finish seventh or tenth or twelfth or whatever it may be, and you're not going to even compete for a title. Go ahead and make the trades. Go ahead and and look forward to better days. I will say the other side of that, and you, it's what you kind of attempted to do last year. If you think you have a shot at that championship, sell, sell your picks. Yeah, I sold my picks. Try, try to make your team better to get to that point somehow. Don't be afraid to give up those picks because rookie picks are – it's a crapshoot at times. Mm, yeah. Even the number one overall pick. The Browns. You never know. <laughs> Jameis Winston, he – you don't know what he – he hasn't paid off yet right now. Every single number one overall DeMarcus pick. Demarcus Russell. quarterback that the <laughs> Browns have taken. <laughs> yeah. But, um, Ryan – or Ryan Leaf was a second overall pick. But here's another thing. <clears throat> For specifically redraft leagues, stay stay competitive, like Barber said. Uh, just and, stay and active. Stay active, but try to stay competitive. Don't just give away your studs to make other teams competitive. You don't owe them anything. You, you don't owe people in your league anything. I was offered a trade the other day, and I thought, you can't be serious with this. And or, Moochie, if you're watching... Man, I said, you know, I can give this up for this, but nah. Don't don't just sell your team to make other teams better because you've given up. So, it's, again, to piggyback off of Barber, stay stay active. You never know what can happen in redraft. So. <laughs> I mean, trades still happen in redraft. They're definitely a lot more rare. Right. But don't be afraid to propose it. And if you get a trade you don't like, unless it's really crazy... Don't berate the guy for sending you a trade that you don't like. At least everybody evaluates players differently. Mm-hmm. Like last year, Ryan got made fun of a little bit in one of our leagues because he traded away Joe Mixon for the price that he did. I don't even know what I got. Uh, you gave up. You got DeAndre Hopkins, but I got Mixon, like two firsts. And yeah, I got Hopkins. I got Nuke, but, man, and I didn't. I don't have any stock in Mixon. I just. As he, as and like that's him. what he said. He's like, I'm not high on mixing. It paid off for him last year. It was a good trade for me. But don't don't berate somebody for what they send you. Right. Now, if I'm I'm not saying if they offer you uh, Travis Etienne for Alvin Kamara, no, then you can like I I still wouldn't berate him. I'd just say, hey man, that's a bad trade. <laughs> I'm not going to accept that. I don't, I don't even want to counter that. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of times where we have specifically, and it's easy for us because we live 30 minutes from each other. We're best friends. We can text each other. He sent me trades before. Uh, for example. That mixing trade we talked about, I talked to him while we were watching football. Yeah, it was in my living room. But So recently, about four weeks ago, in a dynasty league, he offered me uh, Denzel Mims for Darnell Mooney. And I said, you know what, this is one of those trades where if you were to ask me who I would rather have, I wouldn't be able to give you an answer. I would say, stick with who you got. And now we, we hear all this news coming out of New York that Mims isn't really doing all that well, but the injury to Elijah Moore now seems to be helping him. So, again, yeah, it's all about who you value. Mm-hmm. But just don't be a twat about it. Don't be a twat when trading. Can I say that? All right, biggin. <laughs> can you can you say twat on YouTube? No, I wasn't biggin that cut that. I mean, you could say I don't know. I don't know, but don't don't be an a hole when you're offering trades and and <clears throat> or be open to discussion at least yeah. of what try to get a feel of what they're looking for. Um, maybe maybe you'll be able to finagle your way into something that you want. I will say, if you have issues trading with people, sometimes it helps to take a trade at a slight loss. Like, even if it's like, hey, I drafted Ramondre Ramondre Stevenson. You have Damian Harris. I'll trade you Stevenson for next year's third. Yeah. Doesn't hurt you. That's a a good kind of faith-building trade. Yeah, dynasty more relative. but Now, I'm not saying make those kind of trades in redraft, Mm -mm. but in – it, this is where coming, getting to know your your league, mm-hmm. who they value, 
what kind of trades they're looking at. All these tips kind of play into each other a little bit. Yeah, they, they're building blocks. Dynasty football, at the end of the day, I don't care what anybody says. It's it's luck. You Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've gone into seasons thinking I have a really great <laughs> team. And after week one, <clears throat> half of my team's on the IR for the entire season. And I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, well, that sucks. Now I'm here. <laughs> the other thing is, in Dynasty, it's easy to do this, especially in the off season. Mm-hmm. Don't make yeah. trades just because you're bored. Yeah. Unless you really want to. It's your team. Run it however you want. We don't care. <laughs> but I don't suggest making trades just because you're bored. Yeah, that's a bad idea. So, we got one extra. You will regret it. I got... So, kind of... Go ahead. I got bored during our our one Dynasty draft, and I traded, like, Patrick Mahomes... Oh, yeah. ...for a first-round pick. First-round per- <laughs> pick, second-round pick, and Aaron Rodgers. And Aaron Rodgers, yeah. I was just so bored, and I... The first-round pick that I got out of it was, like, the number eight overall pick. You end up getting... Rondell Moore, I think I, it was. <laughs> I was so bored. I just traded away Patrick Mahomes for Aaron Rodgers in a first thing. Thing is, he had just pick. picked too. <laughs> yeah, I was just so bored, and I ended up taking Rondell Moore like eighth or ninth overall, and I was like, oh well, whatever. <laughs> in the end, that wasn't a terrible trade, though. Yeah, but now I'm but, running Matthew Stafford as my quarterback because <laughs> I flipped Aaron Rodgers again. But what I'm going to go with this is our actual one. Drafting's fun. Yeah. Yep. It, it's probably the best time of the year for fantasy football. Oh, yeah. So, enjoy it. It's the, probably the most excited you'll ever be. <laughs> it's only down from your team. <laughs> your team yeah, there. there's just nothing but frustration and hair pulling after The that. thing is, though, have fun with your draft. If you see a guy you want and you know he's going to be taken, don't be afraid to take him around earlier. Get the guys you want if you can. Yeah. And just remember. Trust your gut. You can't win your league with your draft, but you sure as hell can lose it. Oh. <laughs> you know exactly who I'm talking about. <laughs> was it Ian Book? <laughs> <laughs> yep. And with that, your team isn't most likely isn't going to look the same week six that it did in week one, that uh, it did the day after the draft. Nah, I, I think my team's changed pretty drastically mm-hmm. between – Drafting even week four, I'm on that waiver wire after weeks two, one and two, and Mm -hmm. trying to get that guy that nobody else wants, but I think can help my team. Like I said, it goes back to be active there. Mm -hmm. It while drafting is the most fun part, and there's been times I've been in way too many leagues just because I enjoyed drafting. Yeah, well, we have a cheat code. We I have a streaming service, and so does he. But we can watch up to eight games at one time. So it's a little. Cheat codes, we can be active. (laughs) (laughs) It does help. So, I know this is going to be a little bit of a shorter one today, but last thing we're going to go over is not necessarily fantasy related, but thought it'd be kind of cool to go over our thoughts on this. Okay. So, our first one, we're going to go our Super Bowl picks. Ryan, who you? What two teams do you have in the Super Bowl? Well, first of all, I think the Chiefs are going to be. P.O.'d. Mm-hmm. I think they're coming back and winning the second one in three years. So and I'm already calling them my winner. That's a good possibility. I mean, last year, Patrick Mahomes said, it's like, yeah, it was great raising this banner, but we want to do it in front of all of our fans, not just the half-empty stadium. Right. So, I, I mean, I understand that one. So I'm calling them my winner already, and they will be facing <clears throat> the overly... Dramatic Green Bay Packers. <laughs> <laughs> you mean the pissed off Aaron Rodgers? <laughs> yeah, I think Rodgers is going to be like, I have something to prove. Um, I got to make these other teams want me. I'm out of Green Bay next yeah, year. I, I think he knows he's done in Green Bay, whether the talks there, they're in agreement or whatever. So but basically, his contract, he has it that if he doesn't want to stay in Green Bay next year, they have to trade him. Okay. And then that contract heavily incentivizes whoever trades for him to sign him to an extension. See, I've never understood why the the Texans and Packers just didn't get together and be like, dude, let's just trade quarterbacks. We'll take Deshaun Watson. Well, right now, Deshaun Rodgers. Watson may not even play. Well, yeah, but that's because he's in Houston. Well, not even just because of that. There's always that possibility that he yeah. could be put on the commissioner exempt list at any point. 
We'll see. It's a civil suit, so I doubt There's that more happen. than civil suits. They're actually criminal suits now. Oh, I didn't know that. Sorry. But there's 20, 22 civil suits. Man. I'm and not saying... It, I... Zeke Elliott was suspended for less. He wasn't even proven guilty, and he got, I think, four games. I'm not saying... I'm not condoning that kind of behavior no. that he is allegedly <laughs> guilty of committing, but... Um... As, that he's been accused of committing. I just think we, before anything comes out, there needs to be due process. Oh, yeah, I agree. Innocent until proven but, guilty. And the NFL is not going to talk to Watson until after the criminal procedures have gone, or the everything is passed with this. Because, mm-hmm. number one, an attorney's going to tell him not to talk. Fair. No, and number two, they don't I like to. <laughs> All right, Chappelle. Uh, and number two, um, they don't want to interfere with any criminal proceedings, so they're not going to talk to him after, until after. <clears throat> uh, so my Super Bowl picks here, I agree with one of these. I am going to say the Packers, Ooh. and I'm going to pick the Packers over the Bills. Ah. I think the Bills can match up with the Chiefs pretty well, hmm. and I think they've got a really good defense, and it could be that could be an exciting AFC Championship game. Yeah, Chiefs, uh, Chiefs, Bills. Could be. So next we got our MVP pick. Aaron Rodgers. I think <clears throat> this dude's going to come out slinging and he's going to come out mad. That is entirely possible. But we see. I can't uh, tell you the last time that we saw back-to-back MVP. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying we know how well Rodgers plays when he's mad. He's not the typical QB that's going to no. overthrow wide receivers when he's t- you know ticked off, right? This dude's going to play angry this year because he didn't really get what he wanted. Um, and that's fair. I, mm-hmm. I think Aaron Rodgers is a, a phenomenal quarterback, and I think he's really exciting to watch. Um, and I drafted him 12th round in our redraft, right? Sixth. I took him in the sixth? Oh, well, whatever. <laughs> I took him. I, he, was, he was there, so I took him. I, yep. And I'm <clears throat> completely okay with that. Rodgers is one that I've debated on. I even have I have put a bet on Rodgers. I was going to before it was odds boosted. Now it's odds boosted. I definitely did. Yeah, but you got to when it's boosted. But I think I can see Tom Brady getting a win on this one. He's getting up there in age. I think the NFL just says, dude, go away. <laughs> if we give you this when you leave. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the NFL does that because he still brings in a crowd. Yeah, that's true. All right, and then our last one, because this one's a little more fancy relevant. Who's your offensive rookie of the year pick? I know Justin Herbert won it last year. Who won it the year before? I'm pretty sure it's always a quarterback. It's typically a quarterback. Occasionally, I think it might be a running back. Well, I'm going to go completely off rails here and say Jalen Waddell. If... If he doesn't get hurt last season, he's hands down taking nothing away from Devonta mm-hmm. Smith. Jalen Waddle would have been the Heisman winner by a, a, a mile, right? There's this pod, there's this podcast I listen to. Okay, have you ever heard the Duck song? No. Look it up, but they always reference it when they really mention Waddle. As far as Waddle Waddle, <laughs> it's the stupidest thing ever. All right, so that's that's my pick for rookie of the year. I think we're gonna see some. I I think as much. My mom loved watching uh, Dan Marino for whatever reason. She's from Detroit. I don't know why she loved watching the, the Miami Dolphins, but. I think that Dolphins team is going to be fun to watch this year. Definitely. I think Tua is going to start coming into his own. Uh, last year, you got to kind of throw that out because he was just getting over injury. He had no offseason because of COVID. Yeah, don't you have Tua in a dynasty <clears> game? <throat> I do. Yeah, I, I almost offered you a trade for him last night. <laughs> and then I thought, I don't really want him. I'm not planning on trading him, even though I have Mahomes, you have four Tua, quarterbacks. Lawrence, <laughs> Goff. I think I have Jordan Love sitting out there. <laughs> Somewhere. Uh, on that team, yeah, I, I stacked up on quarterbacks and tight ends in that league. Fair. Uh, my offensive rookie of the year, I went more traditional quarterback-wise. I had more of a de- debate between <clears throat> Justin Fields and Zach Wilson. I think I have put a bet on each of these guys. And I think in the end, I'm going to go Zach Wilson. He's starting week mm-hmm. one. And I think he, he actually has looked decent out there. 
Yeah, I think I the mean, Jets are going to struggle, but I think Zach Wilson is better than a lot of people gave him credit for out of the draft. I think he's better than what <laughs> I gave him credit for, but only time will tell. Um, oh, yeah. Time so, will tell. My offensive rookie of the year is Zach Wilson. That's fair. All right, Ryan, you got any closings about anything? No, um, we keep saying it. Give us a like and subscriptions on all of our social media. Social media is YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, fa- Twitter. What else is Twitch? There? Twitch, <laughs> yeah. Because if you if you subscribe to us on Twitch, you can watch us live and chat with us while we're while we're on here and ask us questions. Uh, if you subscribe to us, I believe you get a notification when we're going live. Yeah, but as long as you fo- if you follow us, you should get a notification that when we're going live, as long as they're turned on. Yeah, and uh, especially subscribe to the YouTube channel. We're still <laughs> we're still looking into trying to get like an MP3 <laughs> podcast version of this. Uh, we both work full time. It's pretty busy. It's pretty hectic. So just getting these episodes in each week almost feels like ah oh, man. If I had that hour back, what would I do? But uh, not only that, the research that goes into some of this, and I mean that stuff kind of fun. It, I do enjoy the research, but yeah, it, it can be time consuming. Yeah, it gets there. So. Give us a like on the Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitch, the Twitter, the Twitter. <laughs> I think that's all we got right there. Yep, and so just you know our plans, next week, Ryan and I are going to do another mock draft. Now, instead of a standard 1QB, 10-team league, we're going to go a 10-team super flex mock draft. We thought a mock draft's a good one to do right now because when we did our first one and now, ADP has changed a lot. Yeah. And then not only that, we're going to add in the wrinkle. <clears throat> what if I play in a super flex league? What are, we, what are you going to change when you draft that way? So if you're unfamiliar with what a super flex is, a super flex, you can play a wide receiver, running back, tight end, or another QB. Mm-hmm. So that really changes the draft and how you approach the draft. Uh, I usually preach wait on QB. Super flex league, I'm not against going QB first round. Yeah, you can't be. You you definitely want a top ten QB at this point. Yeah, I, I think, think you, so. I think you can get one. away with two QB twos because mm-hmm. when you're taking it, I mean, if you everybody's taking a QB early, and I can get a Tannehill and a Car, but also stack up on. C- I'm going to be stacked C- on a running Camara. back, or I'm going to be stacked up at another position where other people aren't. That's that's fair. That's true. Well, so, I guess we'll see how. Yeah. I- and, it's just we're, how we're going to decide the order on this time is just sometime this week. I'm going to use a random number generator for Ryan and I. And-